hi students good morning i hope that you are doing well with this video classes today we are going to learn metals and non metals this is the third chapter in our syllabus metals and non metals till today scientists have discovered how many elements 118 in this 118 3 are predicted that means 115 elements are known at present from hydrogen to we have observed these elements in the periodic table from hydrogen to un non octium hydrogen to un un octium we are familiar with 115 elements then these 115 elements are classified into three types three categories what are that metals non metals and metalloids or semi metals if you observe in the periodic table metals simply the elements which are present in the leftmost of the periodic table that are metals and the elements which are present on the rightmost of the periodic table that are non metals and the elements which are present at the center that are semi metals or metalloids and the what are the difference between metals and me non metals there are similarities as well as differences between the properties of these elements okay on the basis of the what are the simply what are the properties of the elements we have learned some properties of elements in lower class then main that means in 8th class and 9th class the main important properties are luster lustrity sonority ductility malleability electrical conductivity heat conductivity these are physical properties and chemical properties what are the chemical properties so chemical properties are some elements loses electrons and some elements gains electrons okay what are that some elements loses electrons to combine with other substances and some elements gains electrons like that for all these 115 elements there are similarities as well as differences in the physical properties and chemical properties of these 118 elements on the basis of these properties that means physical properties or chemical properties all the elements that means 115 elements can be divided into two main groups what are the two main groups of these elements metals and non metals these metals and non metals are used in our daily life or not yes both these metals and non metals are used in our daily life and not only that large number of compounds which are formed from these metals or non metals that are used in our daily life observed in this diagram examples examples of some metals or non non metals are given here in this brass aluminium cast iron copper steel and bronze are given in this brass bronze are brass bronze and steel these are mixture of metals and aluminium iron copper these are simply metals and non metals sulfur bromine oxygen carbon these are non metals then how can you categorize these metals and non metals mostly on the basis of their physical properties then what are the physical properties of metals and non metals now we shall learn about the physical properties of metals okay that means for grouping the substances into different categories somewhat we need what we need physical properties okay that means for example in the in, in your classroom uh, 30 students are there we have to group that 30 students into two categories then how can we group that two uh, st students into two categories uh, based on some properties based on marks or based on their behavior or okay we have to classify them into two groups in the same manner if we want to classify or grouping these elements that can be grouped are classified by comparing their physical properties what are the physical properties of these metals okay first one is metallic luster 
okay these based on the properties of these substances that means elements we use in our daily life also the properties of the substance are also used in our daily life also first important property of these metals is metallic luster generally if we take any metal like gold or silver or iron or brass or bronze or aluminum any metal okay that zinc or any metal it have a shiny surface that means they appear as glowing if it is oxidized that means another layer is formed when the metal is exposed to atmosphere it reacts with oxygen and water vapor present in the atmosphere then a layer is formed on it that is due to oxidation if we remove the layer layer that means if we rub the surface of the metal with sandpaper or if it is a new if it is not exposed to air means if it is new then it has it appears as glowing that means it has a shining surface which appears as glowing that means it has a shiny surface that is called as metallic that property is called as a lustrity this lustrity is for metals that means which, which are luster which appears as glowing simply that are metals and another important property is hardness generally these metals are hard or soft generally metals are hard by using the property of these metals so many constructions are made with this that means we observe some bridges or dams in all and in buildings in all these constructions what are used generally metals why all these metals are very hard okay that's what, but this hardness varies from one metal to another metal okay to improve is hard to improve the hardness of metals one metal is mixed with another metal what we call as alloys okay that means which are hard again that are called as metals next another important property of these metals is malleability what is this malleability that means we observe thin sheets of metals what we call as foils for example if we take gold and silver small amount of gold and silver that made can be made into a thin sheet that means a metal is taken when the metal is beaten with a hammer or hard or thing then it can be made into a sheet this property of metals by making into by making into thin sheets that is called as malleability for example if you take a non metal okay non metal like sulfur or phosphorus or anything and if we beat that non metal can we mold that uh, non metal into a thin sheet no it is brittle that means it can be broken into pieces but when a metal is beaten with a hammer it is not broken okay it, it is not broken then it made into a thin sheet this property is called as malleability again this malleability is also different for different metals for example if we take gold and silver these are the most malleable metals for example a small amount of gold 1 gram of gold is taken that can be molded into a large sheet which its thickness is just like the thickness of a leaf that means its thickness can be expressed in terms of atoms also students observe in 9th class we have learnt rutherford conducted an experiment okay to discover the nucleus and the, to express the structure of atom for this what he took a thin gold foil thin gold foil means its thickness is very very low that means its thickness can be expressed in terms of atoms but actually if we take other metal its thickness can be expressed in terms of nanometer or micrometer or millimeter but in the case of gold its thickness can be expressed in terms of atoms its thickness can be expressed in terms of atoms 500 atoms 5000 atoms like that means it is very 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 thin this type of foils are obtained from the metals only that's why that are called as metal foils due to the malleability of the metals next another important property is ductility generally for electrical transmission electric electrical transmission and to supply electricity what are used generally copper wires and in mainly is aluminum wires this copper and aluminum all these are metals actually whenever that are extracted from the earth and when that are prepared that are, are that are in the form of wires no that is just like bulk of that metal okay this uh, 
bulk mass of that metal this bulk mass of that metal solid mass of that metal can be drawn into thin wires this property of metals which can be drawn into thin wires that is called as ductility for example if we take gold just one gram of gold that can be drawn into some, some uh, a wire which its length is more than a kilometer five kilometers like that only is it surprising or not just how much it is one gram that one gram of that gold can be drawn into wire which its length is very large some kilometers okay that's why for for, uh, for preparing uh, for ornaments generally what is used gold is used this gold has most malleability and ductility for example for these ornaments just one gram of gold that can be made into a large ornament in the form of thin wires or thin sheets with different designs it can be made into a large ornament just a smaller mass of gold due to this malleability and ductility other important properties are conductivity conductivity of heat and conductivity of electricity generally for cooking purpose we use different cooking vessels how these cooking vessels are made these cooking vessels are made of metals like aluminium or copper aluminium and copper are metals why these cooking vessels are made of made only with metal these metals conduct electricity that means the electricity is transmitted through these metals okay this property that means when metals just simply a metal rod is taken one end of the metal rod is placed in a flame and other hold is other end is hold with our hand can you withstand by holding this other hand for for longer time no why the other end also gets heated that means the heat is transmitted from one end to another end this property of metals is called as thermal conductivity mostly for silver and copper conductivity is high that's why in boilers to boil the milk or to cook the food materials fastly generally which vessels are used copper vessels okay in, it is observed in our daily life if the food is cooked in copper vessel gets cooked fastly and in al aluminium is vessel it takes some more time why copper is best conductor than this silver but if you take lead and mercury these are poor conductors okay let us perform an activity to show to know how this heat is transmitted through these metals observe in this diagram what is taken a metal metal wire like aluminium thick metal wire is taken and this thick metal wire is fixed to a stand in horizontal position horizontal position and some wax is taken with the wax some iron pins are fixed at the here one here and other here and other here and other here and other here like that at different positions these iron pins are fixed with wax and take a bunsen burner this free end that means here start heating heating at this portion of this metal rod or metal wire whenever we start that means when this metal portion is heated at this end or here at this end then what happens after a few seconds or few minutes okay slowly the the pin which is placed here that drops off that is dropped and next case the pin which is fixed here that is dropped and the pin which is here the dropped finally the pin which is fixed at the last end of the drop that that is also dropped how it is happened the, here we are heated at this portion but that heat is transmitted through this portion why it is a metal that means the heat is transmitted in the metal from this end to this end let us observe how this heat is transmitted here when a metal is heated metal means any substance it is a substance it is matter we know any matter is made up of atoms when metal is heated the atoms means electrons in it gain energy which energy heat energy why that is heated means it gains energy whenever the atoms or the electrons which are present in it that gains energy that means that atoms and electrons have additional energy okay then due to this additional energy these atoms vibrate very vigorously actually for example if we take any substance that substance is made up of atoms these atoms have a 
दिज एटम्स हैव सम एनर्जी दट इज इंट्रेंसिक एनर्जी ड्यू टू दट इंट्रेंसिक एनर्जी और हीट कंटेंट द वाइब्रेट ओके इन एडिशन टू दर एनर्जी वे आप सप्लाई सम एनर्जी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ हीट दैट मीन सम मोर एनर्जी इज देयर टू दिज एटम्स दैन ऑटोमेटिक दे वाइब्रेट विगोरियसली वेन एवर दिज वेन एवर दे वाइब्रेट विगोरियसली दैन दिस एटम कोलाइड विद द नियर बाय एटम and this atom collides by the, collides the near by near by atom and this atom collides the near atom like this this energy is transferred to the electrons present in the atom and these electrons can move through the metal okay that means this energy is transmitted through this metal when the energetic electrons move through the metal they transfer energy from one electron to other electron near by electron and from this electrons to another electron in this way heat is conducted that means transmitted from one end of the metal to its the other end from this we can say clearly these metals are good conductors of heat next other important property of metals is conductivity what is this conductivity we know metals metals are good conductors of electricity for example here a battery power supplier bulb power utilizer is taken these are connected these are connected with the conducting wires conducting wires means copper wires here some gap is left between this a and b collect different specimens of metals small copper wire small aluminum wire so small silver wire small gold golden wire like that collect different specimens if you place the uh, one, first one specimen copper wire and observe the bulb glows that means it conducts electricity next silver wire the bulb glows with more intensity okay brightly that means it is it is a conductor and its conductivity is high instead of you take a plastic wire or non metal between these is the bulb glows no that means from this act we, we say clearly metals are good conductors of electricity okay how these metals conduct electricity already we have learnt in the metals what are there free electrons are there but in non metals free electrons are not present these free electrons carry the charge from one end to another end that means these free metals carry the charge from from power supplier to power utilizer okay like this this charge is transmitted and conduct electricity that means from this we can say clearly metals are good conductors of heat and electricity but the conductivity of heat and electricity is different for different metals other important properties of metals are sonority and strength sonority sonority means for example if metals are taken metal object is taken if we drop that metal object from a certain height or the metal object is strike with a hard surface then it produce a variety of sound which which type of sound ringing sound this property of metals when produce when they produce ringing sound that is called as sonority just collect different metals drop one by one they produce ringing sound that means all these are sonorous they have sonority just a non metal is taken is it produce a ringing sound no okay next strong these metals are very very strong or not yes that means the metals can hold a large weights without snapping for example in the buildings reinforced concrete first what happened reinforced concrete roofs iron that means metal that is engaged just like a mesh okay that means it can hold very large weights and in dams bridges that are constructed with metals why that can hold very large weights that means the metal can hold large weights without snapping that means breaking okay though most of the metals are strong but some metals are not strong like sodium and potassium okay that's why these are not used for construction these are the important physical properties of metals what are the important physical properties of metals first one uh, uh, that is malleability first one is lustrity lustrous next ductility sonorous malleability okay conductivity of heat and electricity these properties exist for which metal that are for example these properties exist for which elements that are metals and for for which metal which elements these are not exist that are 
non metals like that we decided these are the important these are the important physical properties of metals but these are not the sure test to decide whether it is a metal or non metal for example metals are hard if we, sodium and potassium are metals but we can but we but we can cut the sodium and potassium with a knife next another important property is metals produce ringing sound mercury is a metal if we drop mer drop mercury is it produce ringing sound no that's why these are not the sure test to decide whether it is a metal or non metal some other properties that are chemical properties are the sure test to decide whether it is a metal or non metal about chemical properties of metals we will learn in next class thank you